Hello once again YouTube and welcome back to The Domain. It is I, the Mega Constructs friend, and today I'm here to talk to you about a serious issue that's kind of getting a little worse progressively over the last few years. Something that I've wanted to talk about on camera for a long time, and something that I want to try and cover every angle of. This is a very complicated issue, but it's something that the more I talk to the community, the more I search through eBay and secondhand sellers, it's a problem that has to stop. Today I was looking looking through eBay and I saw some adverts for Blue Team and Fire Team Osiris. Those prices are crazy. And at some point, the resale value of Mega Constructs has to chill out a little bit. I want to start today's video by giving a big shout out to my staff at Discord. My management and admin team have been handling a very difficult situation over the last week. It's not been easy for anyone, it's been quite stressful, and my management are literally just volunteers. So I just want to give a quick shout out to all of you. Thank you so much for sticking with the domain. We're going to be relaunching our Discord with loads of new features suggested by the fans. And that relaunch launch is gonna happen next month, you won't wanna miss it. So, when we're looking through eBay and we're seeing these like hyper, hyper inflated prices on all Halo Mega Constructs, you've got to think of it from two different points of view. There is a big difference between scalping and merchandise reselling, right? The longer since release that a product becomes, it does have the right to be inflated in price. Like, I'm not against say, a sealed phantom being sold for triple the original RRP because it is a very rare product. There aren't many left, certainly 100% complete and in their box, so an inflated price does make sense. The same goes for something like a sealed Forward Unto Dawn, a sealed Scarab. Like, that is probably the last in somebody's collection and they might not want to part with it unless the price is right. So I don't have a problem with inflation over time. Collectibles do tend to gain value the older they become. So we're going to, for the sake of this video, consider two different problems. Scalping sets and resale value of sets. Scalping is a different beast and I think anyone in the community is just like insanely annoyed at scalping right now whether it be the Falcon Sweep, the Arbiter's Quest, the new Banished Garrison pack, these things sell out frighteningly fast. Probably the first introduction to scalping in the Mega Constructs community was the 20th character pack. The 20th anniversary character pack is basically the greatest collectible that Mega Constructs has made. The amount of detail in these figures, the fact that we get returns of fan favorites and really expensive items like Jerome, Carter, Emil. We've got Mickey returning like he was only available in the NMPD Pelican. This is the first good example of what Mega can do if they positively re-release figures and sets. The problem with this one was, and I just don't know why, there was almost no release of this. When you think about Mega Constructs, when you think about any toy company, they have to sell their product on a maybe yearly, maybe six month basis to the toy stores and companies. They don't just sign a 10 year deal with Target. They've got to convince Target every six, 10, 12 months to restock the new Halo. Considering that, how could you not convince toy stores to stock this? And I know there's production issues right now, and I'm not trying to get at Mega. I get that this was a poor release last year. No one will deny this. But what you need to do now is re-release it. Last year was terrible along every supply chain, you know? It was not an easy year. But a way to combat that is just re-release the set. Strike a new deal. I don't even care if you just give 10,000 of them to Amazon. This set is too valuable and is worth too much to too many fans to just release it with a very poor distribution on Amazon only last year. I don't ever talk harshly about Mega Constructs. I have so much respect for them. What I'm hoping from this video is that it pushes Mega to consider re-releasing sets. This 20th anniversary pack, and the point of it was that it was all these different characters that have been hard to get over the years, putting them all into one affordable set, and to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Halo. The fact that probably the most expensive figure in this set is Mickey because he only released in the NMPD Pelican, you're gonna take that rarity 
and put it in another set that is equally, if not more rare than the NMPD Pelican. My hope is that this is not something to trip out about. My hope is that things like the Arbiter's Quest and the Falcon Sweep will be available in every toy store. I really hope they are, especially when you take the legitimacy of the Falcon Sweep. Like, the Winter Contingency has all of Noble Team. It will be the most expensive set on resale value five years down the line. It has to get into as many kids' hands as possible. I find it very sad when I talk to young kids on my Discord and they have a full collection of Alpha 9, but they can't get Mickey. And then Mickey releases in a set that is so poorly distributed they probably will never get Mickey. So that is my first point. I think that the 20th anniversary pack needs to be re-released this year. And you know what? While we're talking about that, let's discuss some other sets that need to be re-released. The Pelican Inbound is already more than triple its retail value on eBay. That was released to the world in fall of 2020 as Halo Infinite came out. The game was delayed by a year, so the Pelican Inbound should have been restocked the next year. It's a shame that last year, the actual year that Halo Infinite was released, we couldn't get the Pelican Inbound. My message with a lot of this is, Mega, don't be afraid to re-release sets. I won't pretend to be in any kind of know-how with this company. I don't know how they operate, how they distribute, how they sell sets, how they even get the license for the sets. All I know is that that if you were able to re-release sets, then you should. But even if you just redrop a massive amount of them on Amazon or in local targets, I kind of feel like it's not that difficult. And that's the second point. Any set that releases and performs well one year should be given the chance to be re-released the next year. And I think Mega knows this because you take something like the new micro build helmets. They've been released in three waves now. Each box has three helmets in and each wave replaces one of the helmets for a new helmet. So now a year and a half later, you still have some of the original helmets that released a year and a half ago, but they've just been repackaged and cleverly redistributed. And I like that a lot. It's an easy way to convince toy stores to continue to restock old product because there is technically a new product inside that bundle. So hey, don't be afraid to re-release the Pelican Inbound and just change up the figures slightly. Just make a battle-damaged Master Chief or a Pelican Bro Hammer with less of a beard from the start of the game. My third point, don't be afraid to re-release old sets. You know what I'm saying? I don't mind sets that are five years old being sold on eBay for an exponentially larger amount of money because I get it. They're rare. They've gathered rarity the more that have been opened. But when you have something like Blue Team and Fire Team Osiris, just re-release them. Literally. Same packaging if you want. Maybe just slap a Halo Infinite logo on there, but just re-release them. There's no reason that those should be kept in the dust when they are going to sell so well. If you release a Cyrus and Blue Team next year, they'll guarantee sell out. Like, it's it's an easy moneymaker for you. While we're talking about things that could be re-released, I know putting the money into a signature set must cost a lot. Designing the packaging, making all those unique pieces and characters, it must be a big deal. So why not just re-release something old? Re-release the Scarab, the Spirit Dropship, the Forward Unto Dawn. Maybe add a couple of new articulation characters in there, but we don't mind. Maybe. Don't even release the characters in there. If you want to just re-release the Infinity as just a flagship, beautiful model, I think people will buy it, even if it's a small release. I also know that maybe convincing retailers to have signature builds in stock is quite difficult. They're so expensive, and from my experience, you're only able to ship one to each store. When the Forward Unto Dawn came out in the UK, it was literally one box like a mega packaging box that just had a Forward Unto Dawn inside and it was one per store. So I get it's difficult to do, but we're also in the metaverse of online production and just shipping it all to an Amazon warehouse and then it being distributed across the country, I don't see that as a problem. I'm not the kind of guy who wants to put more money in Amazon's pocket, but I'm just saying it would be easy to do. I know that sometimes distribution just doesn't go according to plan. The best example I have is Halo Heroes Series 5. That was the only series that was a core celebration of one game. Most of the iconic characters from Halo 3 in beautiful exquisite detail. Gold base plates, like it was a guaranteed sell, but it just disappeared and mostly just emerged in Mexico. I'm saying, don't be afraid to just re-release Series 5 of Halo Heroes. If you ever want to cut down costs, production, design, 
just re-release a set. I guarantee you nobody would be upset if you just re-released Halo Hero Series 5. I want to reiterate one more time that this is no kind of criticism towards Mega Constructs. This is just saying, hey, I see you, I know distribution is really hard right now, and I'm trying to think of a solution here. The only one I can perceive is re-releasing sets. If you have a good year with a product, release it again next year. If you have a fan favorite set that is just massively inflated on eBay now, re-release it. If you have a set that ever came out that had poor distribution like Halo Hero Series 5 or the Spirit Dropship, re-release it. My message today is don't be afraid to just re-release a set and satisfy literally your entire fan base. So shout out to everybody who's supporting this video. I would really appreciate it if you left a comment down below saying you enjoy this kind of content. I have a lot more to say about so many different problems, but also really great things around the Halo community. This is also technically my first steps into what we're gonna be calling a hot tape, which is kind of addressing an issue around either gaming or other topics. And I hope it's gonna be something that branches out into its own separate YouTube channels eventually. One more shout out to the passionate support from my management at Discord and Facebook. And if you do enjoy my channel, I really want you to check out yesterday's video where Kellen played through Halo Infinite's opening campaign for the first time. It's a really beautiful one. He loves Atriox, like he's a big Atriox fan, right? How could you not? Like, that's How a, could you that's not? That's a scary monkey. That. <laughs> That is a scary monkey. It's a scary gorilla. So that's me for today. Thank you very much for tuning in today. I hope you had a great time. You stay awesome. You stay safe out there, friends. The Domain is signing off.